mode. Hey everybody, Preston Brin here with our weekly roundup brought to you free by our trader user group. This is for the weekly roundup week ending March 24th, 2017. What a really interesting finish to the week. What I've got on the screen here is a 15 minute chart of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. And you can see here, the day started off relatively benign, um, right in this area here. And then we just started moving up until about 11 a.m., right up in that area there. We reached a high point right up here. Um, and then from there, it just it didn't look good because most of the day was driven by this, are they going to vote on the U.S. health care bill? Or are they not going to vote on the U.S. health care bill? And then when it became certain that they were going to vote, the market started moving up. And then we moved up um, right into the opening and then up through about late mid-morning New York City time. And then when it looked like they were having trouble getting votes, the market just immediately fell off. Now, I don't generally track the political environment in the U.S. on a day-by-day -day basis unless we've got a binary event. We had a binary event with the Brexit vote. It's a one-time thing. And then generally a month or two or three months later, the markets have already settled and doing what they're normally going to do. We had a binary event with the Trump election and it was a one-time thing and then the markets completely reversed and then started moving higher. This I viewed as a binary event also. So you can see here as the market started falling off, and it fell pretty hard. Um, you know, we moved almost 20 points from the high to the low. Um, and, you know, about half the afternoon, about three or four hours. And then as we got towards the end of the day when they said, okay, we are going to vote, the markets just made the assumption that, well, they're going to hold the vote because they probably got the votes necessary to pass a health care law. And then the markets immediately <laughs> moved back up a huge amount in a very short period. In less than 30 minutes, the markets moved up, you know, about 15 points. And then they immediately sold off when they called the vote off, and now we ended up right here. It was really an interesting day. Um, and for day traders, it was a fun time. For position traders or swing traders, it could be a bit confusing because as you go into the weekend, um, you're really not sure what they're going to do and how they're going to approach the health care. But again, this drop off here really had nothing to do with the actual health care vote. I think the markets have already priced in a pretty good anticipation of Trump and his administration getting these policies through uh, the U.S. government for less tax, less regulation, repatriation of money from a corporate perspective from Europe back to the US um, and so the markets have priced a lot of this in and now the markets are assuming price action wise that should Trump slow down on the health care and then it prevents him from doing a full-on full tilt boogie tax reduction plan because Ryan came out the, the head of the, the Speaker of the House, and basically he was asked the question, does this mean you're not going to be able to get as an aggressive of a tax plan as without the health care? And he said it'll, it'll, he said it'll be, it's not impossible, but it'll be very difficult. So the markets have priced in almost perfection with these markets with Trump getting this stuff in. If he doesn't get it in, we're going to see more of a pullback. And and it's it's just merely the market's pricing in an anticipated forward P.E. ratio of where they think the market should be based on what the administration's going to be able to get through. Now, with our secret trader in our group, what I've been doing is taking profits in a lot of our trades going through February. And now we're holding a couple of what I call anchor trades that are pretty steady, pretty solid. Um, and we should not be impacted by whichever direction the market moves. Uh, and then we put on a couple of trades that were positive for long vega or long volatility. If you're not a member of our secret trader, I'd encourage you to check it out. Also, our user group, which is our trader user group. Also, we're doing a number of things here um, from an educational perspective that I think is going to help a lot of our members out. But as you can see here, this was the reaction of the markets. Now, if I take it back, and by the way, you can see here on this 15-minute chart,
you can see the price over the volume so we had a big chunk of it here and we had a big chunk of it here we kind of settled in right here which is a key Fibonacci it's a Fibonacci extension off prior pivot low and a prior pivot high and that prior pivot high was a huge number that were the highs that were made in 2016 and it just took a long time uh, in 2015 it took a long time to take those out so that's why it's a key pivot high and then of course the pivot lows were made earlier um, last year so in in February of 2016 when we really hit that double bottom there before we got very aggressive going long to the upside so this is a key area right here now if I take a step out and let's look at the two-hour chart okay you can see here the markets are in a bias to the downside mode all right um, we we basically come from roughly 2388 back on the 16th of March uh, and we've had a little bit of a test of the bottom here uh, right here and right here and it seems to be providing support and we've got this pattern here on the MACD now ideally when we when we came up here and then came back down here I would have liked to have seen the MACD come down and give us a bend and then move back up that would give us what we call in our group a more of an ideal bud or a bullish divergence right we didn't get that we've got this right here that gives us a more or less a consolidation pattern in the MACD and granted even though we were choppy here on this two-hour chart it is nonetheless a consolidation pattern and it's consolidating because the markets quite frankly don't know how to make this vote and they don't know where they're going to next um, but I, I can assure you that we're going to break out of this pattern and we're going to break um, and if I were to just kind of put it back on again we're going to break early next week and the break is either going to go to the upside or the downside I suspect the odds now favor a break to the downside we'll see um, but you can see here this green line is also an upsloping trend line and we hit it just about on target and then we bounced higher okay again this is a two-hour chart so understand the time frame that I'm looking at now if I take it out to a daily chart and then let's do the exact same thing but on the daily and let me blow it up a little bit and you'll see some of the resistance that we got in here at that price range here you can see here that on this daily chart uh, we came down and just nudged the upslope and trend line that green line and just slightly above the 50 EMA which is this red line right here so we've got some nice support here at that level I've said that this should probably hold us but we've had a high a lower high and I want to see us come up and roll back over to get a lower high here because remember you want two touches to define a trend line so I would I would move this like this right we've already got a low here and a lower low so perhaps we could get this bull trap where it moves up here does not take out that prior high and then just rolls right back over and then just kind of kisses our upslope and trend line goodbye comes down and tests and remember by that point in time the 50 EMA will be pretty much flat and then we're either going to hold or we're going down um, and I've said if this is the scenario we're coming down and we're testing 2300 which has got an area of congruency with a Fibonacci extension in this case a 1.5 extension of prior pivot highs and pivot lows and then a key touch point here as well as the psychological number of 2300 so these are just some of the scenarios that I'm painting a picture for as we go forward in time because as all of you guys know you know it's it's always this is the side of the chart that we trade right and we base our action as I always say on what happened here and if you do not understand how to fully read a chart you're always going to be guessing here and you're not going to be able to develop an edge okay and all of our trades in our user group are about developing an edge and our trade expectancy is positive because we want to over the next 5 10 20 thousand trades over the next 5 10 20 years to see our equity line 
our equity curve continue to go higher and higher so we're making money on top of money so this is what I'm looking at right here as a possible thing if this holds up we'll probably move up and then the next thing I'm gonna watch is this right here which is sitting roughly at 2390 if we do not take that out we're probably gonna roll over and that will then give us our lower pivot high right there all right so that gives us a high a lower high and a lower high which will then give us two touches right which is what I want the first one never counts that's the origination of the line and then we've got this one here and this one there that would be two there so now we've got this trend line going on or this channel rather going on and if we roll back down I would expect us to pass through here and come where somewhere down in this area down here and we could just blow right through it and hit 2300 somewhere in that area there okay um, so and and I promise you that if we do that if this scenario does play out next week you're gonna see all the knuckleheads on TV the TV talking heads and all the business shows saying oh is the bull market over is Trump done one and done with the health care we're going down we're going down and I believe that the administration's got a few tricks up their sleeves um, I think down in this area here I would be more of a happy buyer than a seller we are still in a buy on the dip environment that means as the markets go up and then it dips down you want to buy here as it rolls back up right and then as it comes down here you want to buy as it rolls back up and that gives you your buying your timing of your buys are in the lower part of the channel as opposed to sell on the rally where you're selling at the upper part of the channel but the channel is sloping down there's a little bit of art and some science in being able to make these determinations and that's kind of some of the stuff we go through in our in our user group so this is the e-mini S&P 500 futures on the daily chart now if we look at the weakest chart of the day or let's say the weakest chart period that would be the s and or the Russell now the Russell as you can see here we've made 2017 lows on the 22nd of March okay and it's under the same scenario here uh, meaning we've got the original high point we've got a lower high and I don't know if we've yet formed another high here maybe interim we run back up move back up the 27 open price because right now we're in the red for the year for the Russell so it is the worst performer for the day okay um, and it is the worst performer so we may come up here and then we may roll back over again and then that would give us our first and then second lower high which then allows us to start to connect the dots and say now a channel is being formed to the downside and we can expect coming in and making new lows here okay the other thing is from that low to that low there there is absolutely no bud zero are no bullish divergence that would suggest again that any upward movement is probably going to be sold off and driving us down in the Russell now this is a daily chart always keep in mind the time frame that you're using okay so this this is not a very good it's it's just showing and remember the Russell is small cap and mid cap so it's not showing up very well if we look at the strongest index uh, that would be NASDAQ futures or NASDAQ and if you look at NASDAQ here you can see here on this chart we're just now starting to just pull back a little bit but there are a lot of individual uh, price levels here that are going to serve as support along with our 50 EMA so as long as NASDAQ stays relatively strong even if the Russell pulls back and the e-minis the S&P 500 pull back or or uh, the Dow pulls back a little bit as long as the Russell stays strong it'll have a tendency to hold everything else up however another thing to watch for if the Russell gives it up and we cut the 50 EMA then we're going to be giving it up big time in all the other indexes right and so these are just some of the things that I'm going to be watching very carefully uh, as far as the indexes are concerned the other thing we want to watch is volatility if we look at the April vol futures right it closed down just a little bit on that last move up 
or that last move higher. But we are still off the lows here when we roll to the April, uh, uh, which is now the new front month of all futures. And we're up to about almost 14. If we look at the VIX, right, the VIX is, you know, about 13. Right? You can see this spike, and now it came way back down. This tells me that the markets still don't have a lot of concern. Remember, for a very short period of time, we went into a backwardation in the volatility market, which meant the VIX, which is kind of the spot price of, of volatility, is higher than the front month vol futures. But it didn't last very long because you could see this candlestick where the VIX, uh, the VIX moved all the way up here, right? I mean, it just it just shot up and then it rolled right back over and finished right in almost where it opened, right? Now we're in the upper part of this green zone. And you may say, what is this green zone? But this green zone, uh, if we just step out a little bit, is basically some of the ways that we look at our strategies uh, in the market and what do we want to do from an option perspective. Remember, you've got to go from green, yellow, um, I guess that's purple or pink, light red, and then deep red, and then all black, which is black swan. So volatility has slowly come up just a little bit, but we're still in the green, and we can stay in the green for quite some time. Not until the VIX gets up over 15, 16, will I start to see the market expecting a bigger dip than you would expect, right? Down to the 2300, possibly down to the 2275 area. So watch volatility very closely. Now, again, we put a, a, an option strategy on that plays into uh, it's got long vega in it, so it's going to work. At, if, if we get a little bit more of a pullback, it'll work out nicely for us. Um, and then, of course, uh, let's watch the key to t uh, uh, help watch those areas, those asset classes that you you know help you determine risk on and risk off. And one of them is going to be the bond market. And the bond market finished up today. Okay, the bond market actually cleared the opening price of 26 or 2017, and we're in the green for the year for the bonds. We came down, almost hit my target. If you guys recall, my target was right in this area here, right around 145. Okay, we came down and hit 145.25. So we came pretty darn close, but we came up, moved above the 2017 open price. We moved above the 50 EMA. And I just don't see us coming up and taking that out. It's a good possibility bonds can move up there. And if they do, then I'm going to be a happy camper because I'm going to be looking at picking up shorts when the bond market rolls over. But if we get up here, that means the equity market, especially the S&P, is back down around the 2300 area again. Okay. So again, let's watch the bond market. And the other one, of course, is the currencies. Right? Um, the dollar has traditionally been... Uh, very weak and you would think well why is the dollar weak uh, when they were yelling is talking about aka our aunt B is talking about dealing up two more rate hikes this year after the one they just did um, a, few, a week or two ago well because you've got other currencies to consider and the dollar is really not a single currency it's a dollar index so this index is fabricated uh, with other currencies that make up this index, right? So, and a big player in this is the euro. The euro makes up about 57, 58% of the dollar index. So you can generally say if you're long the euro, you're going to be short the dollar, and if you're long the dollar, you're going to be short the euro. And then, of course, you got the pound and, and, and the Swiss franc and the yen also kind of rounding out some of the, the value of the index of the dollar. But you can see here the dollar is just coming down. I'm going to watch for the, the 200 EMA. I, I believe Euro and all of Europe equities are going to do better this year than the U.S. Um, and I think the dollar is going to underperform the Euro this year. And there's going to be some good trades for us to take in that. Um, I've been talking to our members about that. Uh, and then, of course, if you look at the euro, it is going to be the exact mirror opposite of this. You can see here the euro, rather than dipping up and rolling down, this dipped down and rolled up. Now, what we could have here is what kind of like a hyperextended cup and handle, where you go down, you go up. You come down, and then we're off to the races like this, right? We had a little bit of a difficulty right here. That was a 2016 open price. But it also, as you can see, is a huge resistance area for the euro, okay? 
Now, the other thing we can also label on this right here, let me just kind of take everything off my screen so to help you see a little bit better, uh, just like this. I could come in here and say, all right, well, tell me if you recognize this pattern, right? That is clearly a resistance point, a big one for the euro. Then you got this guy here, you got that guy there, and you got that guy there. That's the left shoulder. This is the head. This is the right shoulder, right? If we break that, this is called the neckline, and it's a flat neckline. Then what you would do is you take the measuring objective uh, or the distance from there to there and then just project it up here like this, and that gives us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's go uh, two, four, six, eight. That takes the euro up to about a buck thirteen. All right, now it wouldn't be a straight shot, but it would take us right up into that area there. So if we break, and again, we also got the 200 EMA there as well. We got an upward sloping um, um, 50 EMA. The 200 EMA, EMA is now flat. That's a good sign. That suggests closure between the two, which would be bullish longer term. Uh, and the measuring objective on this head and shoulders, should we break out? Now remember, a head and shoulders has got a trigger, which means we got a breakout, and then more than 55% of the time, you'll have a retest of that neckline. And then sometimes it'll come back inside the neckline, and it kind of discounts more or less the head and shoulders. But if it does a retest and moves higher, or it just moves higher, period, this will be our new measured objective. We're going we're gonna to have some fun with trades in this one um, this year. I hope it holds off through the end of the summer because I'm going to spend about two or three months on tours and having some fun across Europe. So I want my dollar to be strong while I'm over there. But, you know, you never know. But looking at this pattern, that's what it's calling out here, right? So there's going to be some trades in that as well that we're going to be exploring in our user group and in our secret trader room. Um, metals, gold. Gold, eh, what are you going to say with gold? Um, we're in this consolidation pattern, all right, um, like this. And I've said we entered the year right there, 2017. So we're still positive for the year. And I said we are going to finish the year higher than where we started. Well, that may be an easy one to call but because that, that would mean gold would have to finish above 1160. But I think even from this point, gold is going to be higher. Uh, than where we started. But it's just going to be very choppy, right? And you can see we've cleared the hurdle here. We actually fell through the 50 and the 200 EMA. We settled right in at kind of where I had said we would probably settle in right around 1200. And now we moved up again. If we fail at this level and we come back down here and then we could be in one of these ranges for a while until we break up or down, I think the odds would favor a break to the upside. However, Gold is one of those uh, asset classes that if we break to the downside, it tends to trade technicals very well, which means we'll come down and test this um, 1179 area, and then we're going to be freight training it down to about 1130, all right, um, and then before we start our next build to the upside. So that's kind of where I see gold and silver, you know, silver is very much the same, okay. So that's kind of where we're sitting with silver. Although I think there's a little bit more bullishness in silver at this time than gold. Oil, well, it finished up today, okay? But we're still hugging the 200 EMA. And I think any move to the upside here is going to be sold off and it's going to push us right back down again. I'm more bearish oil near term than bullish. Although OPEC's meeting over the weekend, they're going to talk about trying to get all the non-OPEC producers in line so they don't cheat. They're going to talk about extending their their production cuts, and that may have a tendency to goose oil, you know, back up to the 50 area. But I just think more, um, I mean, heck, over the past, what, 12 weeks or 11 weeks, 10 of them, we've had inventory bills. Uh, so that just shows that whatever they're doing is not enough. Okay, it is just not enough. So we've got a trade going on in oil, and I'm looking to take this off in our secret trader on Monday or Tuesday of next week. Hopefully, um, uh, things will be relatively benign out of that OPEC meeting. We should be able to uh, draw some nice profits. If it really starts to scoot to the upside after the OPEC meeting, then we can make a couple adjustments, and we'll end up holding it a little bit longer. But our position structure is fairly good in that trade as well. Um, and then... Um, 
agriculture, meats, and softs. We're doing some trades in uh, that I'm working on. We've got some successful trades. Uh, we got a couple of setups that we're watching very closely as well that should be a lot of fun for us to trade. So folks, I want to, uh, members, I will see you Sunday night. I'm heading down to Southern Florida for some fun uh, and some seminars and just working with some folks down there in the Miami, Fort Lauderdale area. Otherwise, I will uh, see our members um, and our Secret Trader members as well Sunday night for our weekly market watch. Have a great weekend everybody and I will see you guys this Sunday night. Ciao folks.